Uh, all right, so in this tutorial, we are going to get started with project two. Uh, we're going to be building uh, the first part of Surf Store, which is uh, the block store. So we're going to be implementing the block store during this tutorial, and this will give you a good um, insight into how to get started on the project and how to do the other uh, parts of the project as well. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so in this first part, what we're going to do is we are going to actually work on the client. So I've logged into one of the ING6 servers and I've checked out uh, the repository and uh, we're going to be using the, the Java version. So I'm going to go in here and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that client. Um, so I'm going to go into here and here we are. So um, the client is, uh, as you can see here, once it starts up, it's going to load in a configuration file and then it's going to call this go method. And the go method uh, at this moment simply connects to the metadata server and does the ping message. Then it connects to the block store and it does a ping message and that's it. So we're going to want uh, to make this do a lot more than that. Uh, now in order to um, implement our, our block store, we're going to begin with a test driven development approach, which means that we're going to write some tests. They're going to fail initially. Then we're going to go back and we're going to add some features to the block store until all the test passes. And then we know we're going to be done. So the question is, what is it that we need to actually implement? Well, to understand that, uh, we are going to need to take a look at the actual protobuf file to figure out what features the block store uh, Im implements. And so um, let's go ahead and just open that up and take a look at it. So uh, we're going to skip over the metadata store for now and jump here to the block store. So the block store has four methods. Uh, it has a ping, which has already been implemented. It has the store block method. Uh, it has a get block method and a has block method. This is very much like a map data structure if you're, if you've, as you've used those before. So we'd like to uh, implement uh, a client that exercises some of these. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and take a look at that. So first of all, I'm going to comment out the metadata store because we're not actually testing that at this time. We're only testing the block store. Um, and so I'm going to, uh, to comment that out and let's get started. So what are some things we'd like to do with our block store? Well, presumably we'd like to um, test some of the methods to see if they work or not, store some blocks, maybe get some blocks, make sure that what it is that we got is what we stored, etc. So um, in order to get started, we're going to need a couple blocks to work with. So ideally, let's create two blocks. Um, and let's see, we're going to need some kind of method that will build a block for us pretty easily. So I'm going to call that um, string to block. And it will take a string and it'll return back a block. So the, ideally, the, the block is going to have a hash value and it's going to have a, a data value that's based on, on this particular string. Let's go ahead and create a second one. All right, so we've got two blocks to work with. Now we're gonna to have to implement string to block in a minute, but we'll come back to that. Uh, so what are some stuff we'd like to do? Well, we have this has block method, if you remember. So how does that work? Well, here's our stub and there was has block. And if you give it a block, it will tell you true or false, whether the block exists or not. Well, we happen to know that um, nothing exists yet. So this should return false. Um, so if you remember from uh, the ATM example, um, uh, the block data structure that we defined in the, um, if you look at the, uh, where's the block here? Um, here it is. The block has a hash and it has some data. And um, so the hash is a string and the data is just an array of bytes. Now has block returns a simple answer, which just has a Boolean in it. Okay. So, um, if we call has block, it's actually going to return back a uh, an, a simple answer message, which had a uh, an answer field, and um, that can be accessed with the get answer method. So it's simply get and then the name of the field, which in this case was answer. Okay, so this is going to return back whether or not the um, block store has this block or not, and we happen to know that this should be definitely um, false. So this should equals false. Now, if we you, if we were using something fancy like JUnit testing or something like that, we could use a bunch of assertions and some other things that would be part of a proper uh, uh, you know unit testing framework. In our case, we're just going to do something ourselves. So we're going to build a little method called ensure, 
that will just ensure that whatever we pass to it is in fact true. Otherwise, we want to crash the program. So let's go ahead and implement that. Um, it's going to take some kind of Boolean expression. It doesn't need to return anything. And it's pretty simple. So if uh, the Boolean's false, then we want to crash the program. And the way we do that is um, we throw a new runtime exception. And we give it a message, maybe uh, assertion failed. OK, great. Otherwise, it'll just return back. Perfect. So now, if our tests pass, everything's going to be great. Otherwise, um, we're going to crash the program. OK, so it's true that the block store does not have B2 either. Uh, so these should both pass. OK, great. Now, uh, let's, go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and test the uh, store block method. So we actually want to put some data in our system. So maybe we say block uh, stub dot uh, store block. We're going to give it B1. So this should store B1. Now it doesn't actually return anything back, so we can just ignore the return type. Now once we've called this though, now has block should be true because now it's actually there. So we're going to add that test next. And the same thing is true actually for B2. So let's go ahead and replicate this. And great. So now we have a couple different tests. We test the kind of does it have a block when nothing's in there? We have we store two blocks and then we test that. All right. Now uh, perfect. So, so far, so good. We're beginning to exercise some of the different uh, methods. Uh, now we need to get a block. So let's go ahead and get a block. Well, um, so we have this get block. And uh, if you remember, get block actually takes a hash value. It looks it up and it returns it back again. So we can go ahead and just pass in uh, the block we've already got. The hash value happens to be filled in. Now, it's not necessary that uh, the, the block that we pass in has a defined uh, data field, like the actual contents can be defined or not, but this should work. And it's going to return back um, some kind of new thing. So let's call that B1 prime. Okay, so we've basically done a lookup of the hash value in B1, and it's going to return back B1 prime if that thing exists or not. Okay, cool. So um, what do we know about this? Well, um, Whatever B1 prime is, it should be equal to B1. So let's add some tests for that. Um, so oops, uh, let's go ahead and add some tests. So we want to ensure that um, B1 prime, uh, so it uh, dot get hash, so we're going to get our hash value, and we want to ensure that equals the um, hash value of B1. Okay, perfect. And um, let's see, uh, we want to ensure that the data. So here's the data, that that is also equal to um, the data of B1. So in other words, that the block store gave us back the right data. So that's kind of important. OK, great. Um, excellent. Now there's no way to delete blocks in our system, so we don't need to know anything about that. Uh, so let's go ahead and print out a message that says something like, we passed all the tests. Yay. OK. So at this point, if we run the code, it should, you know, this should kind of work and it should pass all the tests. Now, obviously, we could add a bunch of other tests if we'd like. And in fact, that's that's probably actually a good idea. We're not quite done at this point, though, because if you remember, we had a little bit of work to do. So we had this string to block method that we have to implement. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in order to implement the string to block method, let's see, what, what do we have to do here? Well, um, it's going to return a block and string to block. It's going to take a string. OK, so far, so good. Uh, now let's see, what do we do here? Well, if you remember, if you looked at the gRPC um, documentation that was online, if you looked at the ATM example, what you'll see is that in order to build a new block object, we, we actually have a couple different ways of doing that. One of those ways is to um, create something called a builder. So the builder um, runs like that. So block, the block object, the block class, it has a, a method called new builder that, that creates this builder. And this builder, what it does is basically allows us to set all the different fields of our block before we kind of instantiate it into a, a proper object. Um, so we're going to need to um, to do that now. So what we're going to have to do in some sense is call builder.setData on some data, and then we're going to have to set the hash value. And once we do that, then we can return builder.build. So this method right here 
turns the builder into a block. And our job now is to set the, the, the contents of the block and the, the hash value. Okay, so let's see, what are we going to do here? Um, all right, so the first thing we'd probably like to do is to turn our, our string that we pass into a, uh, a, a, the, the actual contents. So there happens to be a, um, so we have our builder.setData, and we, um, it turns out that uh, it, it actually takes a byte string, which is a class that was defined by Google, um, but byte string has a, uh, a method called copy from, where you can give it an, a byte array and it will actually turn it into a byte string. So to get a byte array from a string, uh, we can pass it, we can actually pass it uh, a string and um, a character encoding. So we're going to use this UTF-8. So again, where did I get this from? Well, I got this from the documentation that is part of the, the um, byte string object, byte string class. For this project, you're, you're really just going to have to either um, create byte strings from strings like this, or alternatively, if you actually just had some sort of byte array here, then that would work as well. So you can pass in bytes, you turn it into a byte string, that's how you get these the data set. Now it turns out that this throws an exception, so we're going to have to catch that exception. And that exception happens to be called unsupported encoding exception. Okay, and what are we going to do when that happens? Well, let's just crash the program for now because we know that um, this encoding exists on our system. Okay, great. So far, so good, but now we have to set the hash value. All right, well, how are we going to do that? Well, we have the string and we need to turn it into a hash value, and I posted some code online uh, for how to do that, so let's just call into that now. I haven't created this class yet, but uh, let's assume I have some utility class called hashutils, and it's going to have a method called SHA-256 that's going to return the right value. Uh, once we've done that, okay, so far so good, great. Um, now before we leave this uh, file, we have to just add these uh, references to some of these methods that we put up here. Uh, so we'll just do that right now. So we're going to have to import uh, this unsupported exception and uh, that byte string class. So let's import that as well. All right, I think that's about it. So what's up next? So next what we're going to have to do is implement this uh, SHA-256 uh, function and then create a minimal version of the block store sufficient to see, to, to actually have these tests execute. And so that's what we're going to do in part two.